Okay, now that we have that critical relationship sorted out, let's talk about instances. There are two types of objects, static and instance objects. When we talk about the static objects, the one thing that you need to understand is that there's only one single instance of this type of object. In reality, it behaves very much as a normal traditional COBOL program would behave. In fact, you can take a standard COBOL program and insert the source into this section of an object-oriented COBOL program, and barring any COBOL dialect issues, it should run normally. Now, in speaking of instance methods, instance methods are very much different. Instance objects are pretty interesting in that you can have multiple instances of the same object all running at the same time essentially side by side. We refer to object instances as objects or object instances or just plain instances. Now, as I indicated, you can create as many instances as you like from this one class. Every instance that you create it has the same form, it has also the same structure and behaviors, but it's independent from the others. Instance values for all non-static instances may be different you need to identify the object when you wish to invoke one of its procedures or methods. We do this with an object reference or handle. All object instances are created by an object constructor. And like all .NET languages, NetCobol for .NET reserves the method name new for the constructor. Okay, now let's take a look at how this would be implemented in a COBOL program. The rules for static and instance are really pretty simple and straightforward. Characteristics for static members are as follows. Each class may have a special set of data and code uh, associated with it, uh, associated with the static members. One copy of the static members are um, associated per class. Typically, a static member is responsible for managing the data associated with all of the object instances for that class. And of course, the static member is really persistent throughout the entire uh, lifetime of an application domain that uses a given class. Now, characteristics for an object instance are, are also pretty simple, and those are as follows. Every object instance results in a brand new copy of the object definition within the class definition. Object instances can be created and destroyed as necessary. Now, let's take a look at the diagram here. This is the basic COBOL syntax that we're going to be using in our COBOL program. Now, one thing I'd like to make sure and point out to you is the structure of this. With Fujitsu COBOL, you need to make sure that with every class that you create, you need to make sure that you have uh, a corresponding end class. Notice that here. With every object that you create, you'll also need an end object. And the same is true with methods. With every method that you create, you'll also need to use end method. You should also know that with the Fujitsu Net COBOL dialect implementation, that convention is also carried across to your standard COBOL programs. There is one important aspect to object-oriented programming that we're going to talk about now, and that is inheritance. But before I do that, I want to reinforce a couple of conceptual points for clarity. A base class is a class that has no superclass or parent and is said to be the base of the tree of subclasses. A superclass is a class from which other classes are derived. A superclass is also referred to as a parent class. The classes that are derived from a superclass are known as child classes, derived classes, or subclasses. Now, a superclass allows for a generic interface to be specialized functionality through the use of virtual functions. A superclass mechanism is extensively used in object-oriented programming due to the reusability that can be achieved. Most object-oriented programming systems provide a library of classes from which the developer can derive their own. .NET is no different in this regard. These libraries will also have a single or small set of base classes which provide the foundation for the library. Now, inheritance is the ability to start with an existing class and use it as a starting point for creating other classes. 
Now, I've taught this course a lot over the years, and uh, invariably there's one or two COBOL programmers in the back of the room that will say, eh, so what? You can cut and copy paste from a module and do the same thing, right? Everybody knows that we COBOL programmers have been doing that sort of thing for a long time. But there can be complications with that approach in procedural COBOL code. Let's suppose you've used some common code or modules as the starting point for several others. Then you make a change to that common module. Now, in order for that change to be reflected in all of those other modules, you have to go and replicate that change in those other modules. Now, we've all been there. We all know that this is actually a very common scenario. It's also the major cause of a lot of inconsistencies or bugs. Inheritance is different. When you inherit from a class, the new class, which is often called the CHOP class, maintains that common connection with the original class or parent class. This connection assures that any change made in the parent is automatically propagated to all of its children as well. There are several permutations to con consider here. You can inherit from a parent and create a child. You can inherit from the child to a grandchild. And any changes made to either the parent or the child is always reflected in the grandchild. Now, as you might imagine, this means that you have the ability to create some very intricate and complex structures or inheritance hierarchies. Now, a word of caution is in order here. Inheritance is a very powerful feature, but it's the kind of feature that's easy to abuse and it can make your life significantly more difficult if you're not careful in the way that you put all of this together. Now, by the way, in your travels you may hear of a concept called multiple inheritance. Multiple inheritance refers to a feature of some object-oriented programming language, languages rather, to uh, inherit behaviors from more than one superclass. Again, this contrasts with single inheritance, where a class may only inherit from one superclass. You should know that multiple inheritance is not supported in .NET. So, what's the best strategy for creating an inheritance hierarchy? The first rule that I would suggest to you is that you think in terms of generalizations. Uh, the higher the class is in the hierarchy, the more general and abstract it should be. The lower you get in the class hierarchy, the more concrete and specific the implementation of the class should be. Now that we've covered inheritance, we can talk a bit about interfaces. The idea behind interfaces is pretty straightforward. An interface is a description of some of the members available from a class. In practice, the syntax typically looks similar to a class definition, except that there's no code defined for the methods, just their name, the arguments passed, and of course the type of value returned. So I'm sure you're scratching your head and thinking, what in the world is he talking about and what good is an interface? The answer is, by itself, none. Interfaces are created for classes to implement, and that's the key concept here. Implements is always followed by the names of one or more interfaces. You should understand that although a class can have only one class that it inherits from, it can have any number of interfaces that it implements. But what does that mean to implement an interface? Well, think of it this way. The interface acts as a contract or a promise. If a class impl implements an interface, then it must have the properties and methods of the interface defined in the class. This is actually enforced by the compiler. Now, the person writing the class can choose to implement the methods however he or she wants, but the name, the arguments, and the return type of each method must be identical to the definition in the interface. This ensures consistency you can use interfaces as a way to standardize certain common functionality across many classes. By doing this, you actually assure that classes have a similar functionality implemented in the same way.